Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. In this video, I'm going to give you some important tips about ball catch latches. These things you see on top of closet doors and some interior double doors. The reason these ball catches exist is because most double doors don't have anything to latch onto. Exterior double doors or French doors have this thing called an astragal. It's a T-shaped piece that lets the doors overlap each other. This way, one door can lock into the top jam and the threshold below. Then, the other door can hit the astragal like a stop, and they're both more or less secure. But closet doors don't have an astragal, they have a gap between them. So you need something else to keep them closed. And what the hardware industry has come up with is these ball catches. The ball rides up and down on a spring, which forces it into a depression in the strike plate. In theory, that's how it works, it's supposed to keep the door closed. But here's the truth, these things fail constantly. I've never been in a house where at least half of them didn't work. The closet doors either didn't stay shut, or they wouldn't fully close because these latches were malfunctioning. Now, I'm going to show you how to fix these things because people always want to know, and it's really not that hard. But after that, I'm going to show you a better way of keeping your doors shut, which makes these latches unnecessary. Here's how the problem typically develops. As you can see, the hardware sits in the top edge of the door. Sometimes, when the house settles over time, the ball won't reach the strike plate anymore because it's too low. Or, the ball may wind up sitting too high, and it prevents the door from shutting. It just bangs against the frame. I see both time and time again. But, these latches are actually adjustable, which lets us fix both of these scenarios. You can either leave them in the door to adjust them if you want to, or take them out. I'll take this one out for a better view. With a 5-in-1 or a screwdriver, I can just easily pry the hardware out. It's just a cylinder that sits down in another cylinder, typically. If you look close, you can see these two notches around the ball. They make a little pick wrench that fits into these slots, but you don't really need it. A pair of needle nose pliers works just as well. I just poke the plier tips into these holes and squeeze lightly. Now I can rotate the ball. Counterclockwise turning makes the ball rise. Clockwise turning makes it descend. So, if it's low, you just raise it until it reaches the strike plate. Or, if it's too high, you lower it until it provides clearance for the door. Simple as that. The other thing that also happens is that the ball latches sometimes get frozen in place and they won't retract. This is either due to a broken spring or metal corrosion. If you spin the ball all the way out, you'll see the spring underneath. If the spring is bent out of shape, you may need to buy a whole new ball latch. Or, if the ball is sticking, you can sometimes just spray some WD-40 on a rag, lightly lubricate it, and it'll usually come back to life. That's it, those are all the fixes for a ball latch, nothing complicated. But my problem with these latches is that before long, they're usually just going to malfunction again. The ball keeps getting stuck, or they'll gradually turn themselves up or down due to friction. Also, dust from the HVAC system gets into the hardware and gunks it up, and you have to keep cleaning them. My question is why waste your time constantly addressing the same problem? Instead, here's a $1 fix that you'll never have to worry about again. Just use a magnet catch. These little magnet catches typically cost about 99 cents. They make more expensive ones, you can see the variety of them here, but the simple white plastic ones do the trick just fine, and it only takes about 5 minutes to install them. So here, here's how it's done, and I'm going to include one majorly important tip to save headaches. As you can see, the units are very simple. I've actually got two different kinds here, but they're almost the same, and they install in a similar fashion. They each just have a few pieces. The magnet tower, a little metal plate, and a few screws. So to start, I go ahead and snap the metal plate onto the magnet. But I make sure that the little spurs on the plate are facing outward. And now here comes the most important trick. I cut a little piece of double-sided tape and stick it to the back of the magnet tower. I carefully pull the back side of the tape off. Notice how it doesn't overhang the sides at all. It's going to be permanently attached in here so I want it hidden. I go to the door, pull it shut, and I position the magnet catch about one inch from the edge of the door. I'm attaching the catch to the underside of the stop trim where it can directly touch the door. This whole thing will be slightly adjustable, but you want it positioned pretty close from the start. The double-sided tape lets me press it into place and let it go, which will be extremely convenient in a moment. Now I pull the door all the way in, brace the magnet catch with my finger, and force the spurs on the plate into the surface of the door. When I pull the door away, you can see that the spurs have left little impressions. That's the exact desired location for our metal plate. I can now separate the metal plate from the magnet, push it into these indentations, and it will usually just stay put. But I mark the center with a pencil in case it falls off, which it does. And I use a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole there. Then put the metal plate back on and attach it with a flat top screw. 
I then do the same thing to the magnet tower. I pre-drill holes in the center of the screw slots. Then I drive a screw into each slot until they lightly fasten. Because the screw holes are slot shaped, the unit is still adjustable now. So I pull the door shut and see if it's sitting where I want it. If it looks a little too far out, I can loosen the screws and scoot the magnet catch in or out a bit. The magnets themselves have just a little travel in them, so they'll draw themselves toward the metal plate and you'll hear them click when engaged. I don't even take the old strike plates off because they were there to begin with. I just make sure the ball is out of the door. But if you want to remove your strike plates and fill in the mortise slots they leave behind, check out my video on how to do that here. You'll probably be surprised at how well you can hide them. Otherwise, you're all done with this project. Because these magnet catches are inside the closet, they're almost always hidden. You'll never really see them unless the door is open. But keep in mind, you can use these catches in a lot of places, like cabinets and display cases. They keep doors shut, and they function for a long time without a fuss. I think they're just way more reliable than the ball catches, and you only have to spend a few bucks on them. So thanks for watching the video. As always, please put any questions, thoughts, or opinions down in the comments. I always try to respond to them. Otherwise, be sure to check out our other videos and visit us at thehonestcarpenter.com. Thanks, everybody.